Loki season two, take one. Three, two, one. In episode four of Loki, we start where we left off in episode three. At the end of time with Renslayer and Miss Minutes by the rotting corpse of He Who Remains. It was easily the best episode of the season so far and left the audience with another cliffhanger. So let's talk about it. This is Pop Rages and I'm Danny Alex here in Los Angeles where we rage against pop culture. The very idea of a review is to give your opinion on what you saw. It doesn't mean my opinion is any more valid than yours or yours over anyone else's. I approach it from a screenwriter's perspective. And if you do or don't agree with me, let me know why in the comments below. So whether you're enjoying season two of Loki or not, it's still one of the better Disney Marvel TV shows because there really isn't any good Marvel TV show. You make a good point. Now that's just my opinion. And this isn't your Marvel phase three Loki. He needed changes for him to be relatable and likable as a main character. The God of Mischief, the villain that we know as Loki, well, he just wouldn't work very well on this show. Season two is far better than season one. I did not like season one for many reasons from scripts to production value. But in season two, the writers and production team have tightened things up. With each episode, this season endears itself to me a little more and I'm finding reasons to like it and fewer reasons to toss it aside. It's growing on me and I can honestly say that I enjoyed episode four. But what concerns me is that they go too deep into the multiverse mud. So we'll see what happens. And there is our first impression. The chemistry between Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson is a huge positive for this show, with Kei Hee Kwan doing a fantastic job as OB, another standout character. But the rest of the cast feels adequate for me and I can do without ever having to listen to Jonathan Majors acting out another character with that stutter. Painful. Episode 4 begins with Miss Minutes revealing to Renslayer that she was actually partners with He Who Remains and the commander of his army. But he has since erased her memory so this comes to a, as a complete surprise to her. My problem with this reveal and it's nothing against the actress She's not convincing as a battle-hardened commander, nor does she look like one. How about uh, Gina Carano, Charlie Theron, or Denai Guerrera? Back at the time, Variance Authority, the TVA, Loki and Mobius are dealing with a crisis with a temporal loom. It's nearing catastrophic failure and is about to explode. I think. I'm not sure what a temporal loom actually does, if or if it explodes, but OB has a plan. That smart old son of a gun. He uses a device developed by Victor Timely that fits into the throughput multiplier to become the plot device needed to stop the loom's explosion. What does that even mean? Now, these are the times that you have to just accept these simple solutions to these massive grandiose problems and believe that human beings at the TVA are the shepherds of all time and space in every universe everywhere. So now they have to take the modified throughput multiplier to the temporal loom to stop the impending disaster. But as Victor Timely steps out to finish the job, the temporal radiation is too intense and he disintegrates the second he steps out. Poof, he's gone. It's actually a funny scene. But if they bring him back alive in episode five, this show will lose me. You and me both. Renslayer returns to the TVA and offers General Dox and her men the option to join with her and in return, they get to live. Sounds like an easy decision, but they all say no and die. How does that even make sense? Except for the slimy guy, Brad Wolf, and her army increases by one to a grand total of one. On top of that, Miss Minutes has taken control of the TVA computers and systems. But again, OB has another idea. If he reboots the entire system, he can deactivate Miss Minutes and take back control of the TVA, which would also give Loki and Sylvie their magical powers. It works. So with Miss Minutes out of the way, Sylvie mind controls Brad Wolf and makes him prune Renslayer, sending her to the void. Meanwhile, the temporal loom is hitting critical failure and all they can do is watch as they are all engulfed in the blast of multiverses and timelines. <laughs> it looks like the perfect plot development to bring back any characters at any time. Isn't that right, Disney? Disney? 
On a good note, the production quality and world building do stand out. It feels genuine and conveys a feeling that this may be a real place, despite the very idea of this show being impossible, like pure science fiction. But it's an improvement over season one, where many of the scenes looked like slapped together soap opera sets. Season two has a better tone and a polished quirky style. But the fact is, there should be no excuse for the production not to be top notch with an almost $25 million per episode price tag. Loki can be an enjoyable show if you accept the plot with its multiverse and timeline concepts. It seems less about Loki than it is about Kang and setting him up as the new uber powerful bad guy for phases 5 and 6. But I find Kang a flawed antagonist and lacks serious potential to become a compelling supervillain. Thanos created high impact tension and credibility in phase 3 and from what I see of Kang, he doesn't look like a high impact antagonist. But I'm willing to watch where they take them and see how they might develop the character. Another plus in the show is its attempt at humor. It comes in measured doses, but where it tries to be funny, it actually is. It works. But this show can have a slow and tedious pace at times, leaving you itching to grab the remote and change channels. But it can also pack a lot of story in a small amount of time, as is the case with episode 4. If you're like me, you may have also acquired a serious amount of multiverse and time travel fatigue. If Disney Marvel keeps heading deeper into that sinkhole, it's hard to see how any movie or TV show will have a storyline with characters worth investing your time in. The good thing is that Loki Season 2 never takes itself too seriously. And this is important in enjoying the over-the-top storylines. If you do try and take them seriously, this show will never be enjoyable to watch. And maybe that's where this whole multiverse junk is actually heading. And that's all I have to say about Loki Season 2 Episode 4. If you like what you heard, I thank you for watching. And if you didn't, well, go f*** yourself. Ah, just kidding. I thank you just the same. And I'll see you in our next video.